one Pedro has bestowed much honour on a young Florentine called Claudio. Yes, much deserved on his part. Equally remembered by John Pedro. He had borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. I pray you, is Signor Mountanto returned from the wars or no? <laughs> None of that name, lady. <laughs> There's not such in the army of any sort. My cousin means Senor Benedict of Padua. Oh, he's returned and as pleasant as ever was. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten during these wars? But how many hath he killed? For I have promised to eat all of his killings. Faith, niece, you tax Senor Benedict too much. But he'll meet with you, I doubt it not. He has done good service, lady, in these wars. You must not, sir, mistake my niece. There's a merry war between her and Signor Benedict. They never meet, but there's always a skirmish of wit between them. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. Is it possible? Very easily possible. For he wears his faith as but the fashion of his hat. It ever changes with the next block. I see, lady. The gentleman is not in your books. No, and he were, I would burn my study. But I pray you, who is his companion now? Is there no young swearer who would make a voyage with him to the devil? He is in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, hero, he will hang upon him like a disease. God help the noble Claudio, if he had caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pounds ere he be cured. I'll hold friends to you, lady. Do, good friend, do. Oh, Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonardo, you have come to meet your trouble. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter, Hero. <laughs> her mother hath many times told me so. Well, you <laughs> doubt, sir, that you not, sir? Signor Benedict, no. You have it full, Benedict. We can tell by this what you are, being a man. Lady just father herself. Be happy, lady. Feel like an honourable father. If Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all, Messina. That's like him as she is. <laughs> I wonder that you should still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. Oh, my dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? <laughs> is it possible Disdain should die while she hath? Such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict. Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Well, that is courtesy a turncoat. But indeed, I am loved of all ladies. Only you accepted. And I could I could find it in my heart that I had not a hard heart, but indeed I love none. <laughs> a dear happiness to woman. They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood I am of your humour for that. I would rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Well, may God keep your ladyship still in that mind. So some gentleman or other would escape a predestined scratch face. <laughs> <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse and twere such a face as yours were. Oh, you are a rare parrot, teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I want my horse at the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer. But in God's name, I I am done now. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you are old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Signor Claudio, Signor Benedict, my good friend Leonardo has invited us all. I tell him we will stay at least a month. she other than she is, she were not unhandsome. But being as she is, I do not like her. I am in sport. Now I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. 
Let's go buy her the night we inquired after her. Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. In my eyes, she's the sweetest lady that I ever looked upon. But I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. There's her cousin. His beauty precedes her fury like the first of made off the last of September. But I hope you have no intent of turning husband. Have you? Well, I scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary. If Hero were to be my wife. She come to this. But I never see a bachelor of three score again. Why would I frost thy neck in a yoke and wear the print of it? And say away, Sundays. Here comes the prince and seek you out. What secret have held you that you followed not to Leonardo's? Uh, would your grace would constrain me to say? Uh, I charge thee on thy allegiance. Uh, on thy allegiance. Mark you, Claudel, on my allegiance. Well, he is in love. With who? <laughs> well, that's your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. <coughs> Hero, <laughs> Leonardo Short's daughter. Amen, if you love her. Oh, he's well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. On my troth, I speak my thoughts. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. In my two face and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. How she shall be worthy to be loved is something that fire will not melt us out of me. I would dine it at the stake. Else was ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. I never could maintain his part, but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I give her thanks. That she likewise brought me up, I give her most humble thanks. But all women shall pardon me. But I will not do them the dishonour not to trust any. I would do myself the right to trust none. I will live the bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die. With sickness, with anger, <coughs> or with hunger, my lord, not with love. In the meantime, repair to Leonardo's, commend me to him, and tell him we will not fail him at supper, for he has made great preparation. <laughs> Walk with me, Claudio. Hath Leonardo any food, my lord? No child but hero, she's the only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudia? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye that liked, but had a rougher task in hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant. In their rooms come soft, thronging, delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying, I liked her. I went to war. Thou dost love, fair hero, cherish it. I will break with her and with her father. She shall be thine. I will fit thee with a remedy. I know we will have revelling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise and tell fair hero I am Claudio. And in her bosom I'll unclasp my heart and take her hearing prisoner <coughs> with a force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after to her father will I break. And the conclusion is, thou shalt have her. Come, let us put it into practice presently. Come, shall we hear this music? Yea, my good lord. How still the evening is, as hushed on purpose as the grace harmony. <laughs> If it had been a dog that would hold us, they would have hung you. See you where Benedict had hid himself. Very well, my lord. Leonardo, <laughs> <coughs> come hither. What was it you told me of today, that your niece was in love with Senor Benedict? I did never think that lady would love any man. <laughs> no, nor I neither. How wonderful he should so dote on Senor Benedict, <laughs> who she seemed ever to abhor. Possible? Since the wind in this corner? <laughs> Maybe she does counterfeit. Faith, like enough. God counterfeit. There was never counterfeit of passion, and she discovers it! <laughs> Why? What a 
effects of passion show she? Make them look well, the fish will bite. What effects, my lord? My daughter tells you how. She did indeed. How, how? <laughs> you amaze me. I would have thought her spirit would have been invincible against all the sorts of things. Especially against Benedict. <laughs> They have taken the infection. Hold it up. Has she made her affection known to Benedict? No. That's her torment. She swears she never will. It is very true, your daughter says. Shall I say she, who have so often counted him with scorn, write to him that I love him? She'll be up twenty times a night. Yes, and then down upon her knees she'll fall. Weeps, begs, sobs, tears her hair, beats her heart, screams, Oh, sweet Benedict! God give me patience! She does indeed. My daughter says that she's a fear that she will do a desperate act to herself. That's very true. <laughs> it were good that Benedict knew a bit from some other, if she will not discover it. No, I pray thee, never discover it. He would only make a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. Mm. And he should. It were arms to hang him by, as she is exceedingly sweet and out of all suspicion. She's virtuous. And especially wise. In everything but loving Benedict. <laughs> but heroes say surely Beatrice will die. For she says she will die if he love her not. And she will die ere he make his love known. And she will die if he woo her. <laughs> she does well. If she were to make tender of her love, tis possible he will scorn it. For as you both know, he has a contemptible spirit. <laughs> oh! Ah! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry for your niece. Uh, shall we go find Benedict and tell him of her love? No, never tell him of it. Let her wear it out with good counsel. She'll wear her heart out first. Let it cool a while. We'll hear more of this from your daughter. I do love Benedict well. But I would wish that he would modestly examine himself <coughs> to see how unworthy he is of such a lady. Will you walk, my lord? Dinner is ready. <laughs> if you do not dote upon her on this, I would never trust my expectation. This same net must be spread for Beatrice, and your daughter and her gentlewoman must carry it. Shall we send Beatrice to call him in for supper? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.